Hello there, welcome back to another Advent of Code video. So today, or should I say tonight, um, I want to do something a bit different than usual. Uh, so we have already finished uh, Advent of Code 2022. And one thing that I would like to try is to maybe try to improve performance of the current uh, solution. So, so let's go to Advent of Code uh, folder. And let's actually take a look at the readme file first. Um, this thing. So on the readme, I wrote some things about the goals of this um, of this project, uh, having fun and learning stuff, definitely um, accomplished. And also have a fast execution time, and I should say, well, less than one second for the whole set of puzzles, which we actually achieved. So if we run um, the whole thing in release mode. Um, actually, I should first build in release mode. Well, it was already built. Um, then if we do, let's do it like this. Now time, um, target, release. I'm doing this with uh, an ampersand so that I can run this command again later. Um, advent of code, blah, blah, this will time the whole thing. There we have all, all of the daily puzzles answers. My cat wants to jump in to my lap. Let's allow her to do so. I'm with my cat now. <laughs> okay. And this thing is running in just under a second, uh, almost nine, 900 uh, milliseconds there. And if I'm not recording with OBS, it is like around 700 milliseconds, so it's fine. It's relatively fast, and each daily puzzle has also its runtime. So we have um, some things uh, like this takes nothing, like two milliseconds, and and the ones that don't even have a number, it's because they are taking less than one millisecond to run. Uh, but some others take a lot of time, relatively speaking, like uh, 180 milliseconds, 200, and so on. Uh, so what I think is a very low-hanging fruit that maybe we can pick is why not run each of these, um, well, all of these daily solutions in parallel? Because these are each of these is independent from each other, so they should be. This should be like a trivially parallelized, parallelizable thing. And well, recently I have been learning some things about parallelization in Rust. In fact, I have a very long video about that that I haven't published yet, but uh, I should publish tomorrow. I think I need to write the descriptions and ch chapters for that. But anyway, that should be uploaded before then this one. So in this video, I will uh, probably be using some learnings um, about um, that one, uh, how to do multi-threading and maybe using an external library like Rayon to simplify things. So let's first take a look at the code that runs. Um, yeah, here is the main, the code of the main function. So we have a, an array uh, with all the uh, daily um, functions. Then we have a, a function here or a, I don't know, closure called run single day that just takes a number for, for the day and when we we can run this thing um, passing in a given number so let's say I want to run the uh, day 25 and it just prints uh, runs that day and that's it so this is what this code does it does some validation and runs a single day and when we don't pass anything so it's just uh, one argument which is the name of the program we are executing all days by doing a for loop from one to the number of days. And this is, it starts at, at one because, um, well, we are not using zero as the starting uh, number because we, we, we need to read the input, which is like starts at day one and, and so on. So here, yeah, this thing is used for this. Then we need to access the array doing minus one, this sort of thing. Anyway, this is basically the for loop that we would like to parallelize. So how do we go about that? Well, a very 
I'm probably going to end up using rayon for this, but first I want to try out um, doing it just with um, built-in threads. So here I guess I'm running this and asking if this thing was an error. Yeah, and when I'm running this, this function is running the daily um, solution, but also printing things to the standard output or standard error, which I think will be, will be a problem for parallelization. But let's do a very naive thing and just uh, first extract this into a variable and call this thing just results which I think is uh, a result, yes. And instead of running it like this, let's just do a thread spawn. So spawn a thread to run this spawn. And the thread will just run this. And actually this won't work because we need scoped threads. Um, yeah. Of course, this. Uh, we are also doing this uh, early exit. Let's not care about this for now. Uh, but th this thing will complain because it's trying to take ownership of stuff that it doesn't own. And if we do a move here, actually, does this run? Does this compile? Don't we have? Well, we have an error over there. Let's read the error with uh, cargo run. Um, what's happening here? And this variable results, yeah. Closure may leave the current function, but it borrows days. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this thing is now. Um, this closure is now taking ownership of this thing, and this thing is borrowing days, which is the local variable here. So we need a scoped thread um, for this. So let's use simply thread scope. Let's move this for loop inside and do uh, scope spawn and a normal closure. So that should, I think this should at least run. What's the problem now? Uh, yeah, they take no ownership of the day number. Does this run now in release mode? Well, let's actually try it in the big console. Let's do, let's do this. Well, it's not complaining. I mean, actually run. <laughs> Look at that. It took um, 270 milliseconds, which actually is very nice. You can see that day 23 is taking uh, almost that time. So this is the, the daily solution that takes the longest. And so now the total runtime is bound by the this lowest daily puzzle instead of like adding all of those together. And look at that, like this, this thing actually run almost in the order of, um, like not, now the results are, are not correctly ordered. You can see that it goes from five to 10 here <laughs> um, because they, they are being printed um, as they are finishing execution and the ones that take longer uh, are printing last. Which, to be honest, I don't really mind that much. Um, it actually looks very nice. But yeah, I think I would probably want to have this thing in order. I don't want the order of these things to be like non-deterministic. I would have. I would like to have days from one to twenty-five in order. Oh, look at that! In in this case, day fifteen is the one that took the longest. Interesting. So we have a couple of days that take more than two hundred milliseconds. That's also probably um, so some nice chance for optimization there. So okay, how should we go about this? Mm. I think that one thing that we need to decouple is the running of a um, daily solution 
from the printing of the results, like the, um, the side effect. So we can run them all, spawn a thread, threads to run them all, then collect those results, and then print those results, I think. So um, let's first change this uh, run single day to, this only just does two prints and it res returns OK or error with nothing inside to then just, um, that is returned like that to then ask this, this kind of thing. If it, if it was an error, then return exit code failure from the main function. So the, the whole program um, uh, exit return, like return code is error. So I think here we could do something like, um, instead of print line, we can just return an OK variant, but with without printing, instead of that, just format this um, string that we want to print, because otherwise, otherwise if we return just the data, like the output from this day, uh, we would do we we would need to do the um, formatting uh, in the you know the code that is later going to to print this. But this thing includes the day number, the output of the comment, and also this time annotation thing, which is what we see uh, here, because the fu this function also measures the time uh, that took to run this. Um, this function and reading the file and everything. Um, so I think I don't want to do this format uh, elsewhere. We can do it here and return it as like this is the output that we want to print in case everything went right. And in case of an error, let's do basically the same thing but format this um, error message which we are only handling the error of um, when reading the file. Um, and anything that um, blows up, that could blow up in the execution of um, the daily solution, uh, it, it will just panic. We are not propagating errors like properly from there, but that's, uh, that's another issue. So, okay, now this thing should be yeah, this is now a function that uh, returns a result of string, string. That's nice. So string in the case of um, everything being fine and also an error with a string. Okay, so now um, we can spawn these things and actually it's like we want to collect the results of this. So let's do, instead of doing a for loop, let's convert this to use this um, range and then map each thing so this would be a day number and move this spawning of the thread inside of this map function well i don't want to forget about this uh, early return i still want to do that uh, or at least not early return but at least return um, failure when some of these days failed. Um, okay, so we want to spawn a thread and then collect all of these handles. Uh, so let's this be, um, well maybe results. This would be a vector of thread handles. Yeah, well, scope join handle. And then, um, I think then we can just do a for loop, I think. Um, right? If we do for results in results, we can actually consume this here, I think. Um, now actually, well, let's call this thing actually handles because these things are uh, handles, not, not results yet. We can then think about naming later. So, I say let result be the um, join 
joining this handle and actually this on itself could be a result so we are expecting these things well if now as I mentioned like if anything goes wrong when executing one of these daily um, functions this thing will panic uh, well this function call will panic if that happens now that we are executing this inside a thread the error of that panic will come in this um, join result so I guess we could actually propagate that um, Hmm, we could say something like um, if let's uh, if the result is okay actually this yeah okay yeah this is the result uh, when joining oh no actually I want to what I what do I want to do I want to handle the case of it being an error. Well, I actually want, would like to handle both things, probably. Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's two results nested in each other. <laughs> one is this error case, and the other one is from... Um, from handling... Um, sorry, the, 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 the possible panic on the thread. So can't I can't I do something like join and then uh, this function if the result is okay otherwise return the error value. Um, now actually I would like to transform the error if it is. Huh. Do I want to transform the OK? No, yeah, I want to transform the OK case, I think. Um, then result. Um, no, I, I'm not really sure what I'm trying to write here. Let's actually not think about <laughs> uh, possible errors from um, when spawning the thread. So we will just panic again. I, this is what we were doing before, uh, panicking. So let's do that. Let's say let result be this. Okay. And then um, then we want to print these results. So we are going to um, do a switch statement here. So switch, no, not switch, match. I'm programming in Rust. Uh, match this result. And if it is OK, and this OK variant has an output that I want to print, then just do uh, print line this output. And otherwise, this might be an error. And the error actually also has an output. Uh, let's maybe call it error output. And we're going to do error print line of that error output. And I think that's it. And then we can do the this uh, early return. So if um, the result is an error, we want to return exit code failure. Okay. And this actually. What's your problem here? Mismatch error time. Yeah, because if nothing, like we are returning this from the call to thread scope. And I guess we need to return exit code. Um, actually, huh, success? But no, I think if we return this from the match statement, uh, we are not using that result of the match statement. So I think, yeah, we can do return of what this thing returns. 
Yes. Okay, it's a bit of um, a bit ugly, but borrow partially moved result. Wow, partially moved. Um, why is this? Is it because we have? Huh. What's happening here? This reinitialization might get skipped. What? Ah, partially moved here. Okay. But you borrowed here after partial move. Uh, so this is because this is a result. Uh, okay. So I think um, we can probably. We can probably take a, like borrow this instead of moving it. Yeah, I think that should work. And if we run now, what were we trying to do? Yeah, we were trying to have this um, printed in order. And yes, it works, it seems. And it seems to have taken longer, although that might be noise. Yeah. It, it seems to be nice. Yeah, so the day 15 here took 300 and something milliseconds and it's almost this time, so this seems to be fine. And now we are printing things in order. Okay. And it's not the prettiest code ever. Oh, and actually I think I wrote, broke something else, uh, which is that this run single day is also being used when running, well, a single day. And now we are not printing anything in that case. So if I run I don't know, day 25, for instance, we are not printing the results of that day. So we have to fix this um, to make it behave as before. I guess I would probably want to um, do this. Actually, I will extract this into make a little uh, closure here. So let's um, print the results. Actually, I think this could probably be a, a function, like a top level function, but let's do it like this, maybe. It's gonna take a result, this probably needs type annotations, but what if I call you with something? Uh, print the results with results. Mm -hmm. What's your problem? Expect the result find. This is inferring that it gets a result value instead of a reference. Why is it inferring that though? Hmm. Can't we tell that this is a, I think if we do this, it's basically telling, okay, infer this from this usage. And if we say, hey, this will be a reference. Yeah, that seems to do the, the trick. Okay, so if we say, this is a reference to something, infer that something, and then it infers its reference to result string string. That's fine. And now in the single, uh, Single day case, we can do something like we do in the other case. So we extract the result thing, then we call. Actually, I think now we can actually move this. Instead of taking a borrow here, we can pass a reference to here. Actually, if we do that, do you get happy? No. No, we still need this thing. Okay. Um, but now we can do print the results with a again a reference to results. Okay. Does this work now? If we run for day twenty-five, yes, it does. Okay. And if we do something like. What else could we do? Let, let's do something interesting. Let's go to, um, I don't know, uh, day 22, which was 
super nasty. Now, this is the input for the 822. Let's rename it to be whatever. So it doesn't, uh, it won't be find it, uh, it won't find this, this file. So if we now run day 22, for instance, we should have, I'm running this unnecessarily complicated, but yeah, we, we, we see the, the error here and it actually failed. And uh, we see this uh, red carrot here. That means that, um, no, not build release, run release. Um, that means that the previous uh, command exited with, uh, with error code. So yeah, error reading this, no such file directory. That's very, very nice. Okay, so if we go, let's undo that change. Oh, actually, before I'm doing that, I want to see what gets printed when running everything. So let's run in release mode for everything. Oh, look at this, interesting. So, ah, we are printing, yeah, the error, and then we are early exiting, early terminating. So I guess, I guess that's fine. We could also keep um, printing the other days, but I, I guess that's uh, similar to what we were doing before. So I will leave it like this. I don't want to change too much of the behavior. Okay, so this is this seems to be working. Um, I think I'm okay with this extraction, like this separation of um, the running and the actual printing, like the side effect. Then we are running, uh, we're having all, all of these thread spawns for each day. That seems to be fine also. And then we are printing these things and early terminating. Um, well, I guess if we want to, if we really wanted to have like, um, uh, what is it? Like an early, not non, non early termination, we can say, hey, um, exit code can be uh, start as, at, as exit code success. And then if something was an error, do exit code uh, be this, exit failure, and then return the exit code. So with that, actually I should go back and rename. Oh, it's still renamed. So if we run now, we should see the error. Um, yeah. And we also keep going for the other days. That's fine. I think that I prefer this to what we were doing before. So <laughs> scratch what I said about not changing the behavior of this thing. Okay. Um, this is working as, as, as expected. And if we uh, time this thing, so let's run this way. Yeah, we are we have reduced the runtime to about a third of what we had before. So that's a nice improvement. Um, I want to add this change and well, not do, not do this rename, restore this file and yeah, delete this and undo the rename. Um, <clears throat> Okay, this is something of an improvement, but I also want to try out doing this same thing with uh, Rayon. In this case, I'm not really sure if Rayon will improve things a lot, but I just want to give it a try because I also have the idea of using Rayon for other daily, like in, you know, uh, in the daily puzzle solutions to speed some, some things up, like this, these things that are taking like 200 milliseconds or something, not this one, but I don't know, this one. I think many of them have um, possible optimization, like possible improvements uh, by running things in parallel and probably Rayon will be a very good fit, fit for those. So let's try Rayon here, if I can type. No, I. what did I do? Cargo add is what I want. Okay, and Rayon is now added. So how do we do this 
with Rayon now. I think it will actually be quite similar to what we are doing here. Um, it's just that instead of... Um, because if we do... Let's think about this first. If we don't do this handle collection, it won't be handles, but it will be the results. But if we do um, something like, hey, this, um, this thing, instead of iterating it sequentially, we can convert it. I think there is an into, into parallel iterator. Um, then we do the mapping. And well, what happens if we do something like, well, we do the mapping, not thread spawn, of course. We just want to run a single day here because this is already a parallel iterator. Um, but instead of collect, what happens if we do a for each here? Doesn't for each exist? Uh, did I screw something up? I think for each should be a method on run single day, okay. I'm not sure why it's not uh, auto-completing auto this map. Uh, wait, isn't this the way you're supposed to into pal iterator? What does this return? Range inclusive into power iterator. Yeah, this is what I want. Um, I think something is getting confused here and I'm getting confused uh, because of this. Let's first maybe take this out of the thread scope thing. Um, put the return in here. Really, does this map not exist here? Yeah. Map, oh, I think they need to yeah, I need to import everything from Ray and Prelude. This is the problem. So, so this, these functions are seen, uh, are, in, are in scope. Okay, yeah, now the map exists. And what happens if we do for each after mapping? I think this shouldn't work, as in it should... Um, I think I'm expecting this to print things out of order, but let's try. Um, print day results, these results. Uh, this is probably, yeah, this one's a reference. So let's give it a reference. And let's not do any of this. Just return the exit code uh, for now. I don't care about that. Actually, I think I, I can comment all of this out because there is an, another return downwards. So what happens if I run now? Well, it needs to compile some things that come with Rayon. That is fine. It's taking much longer, but okay. Yeah, it's now printing things, uh, but out of order. So yeah, I suspected this. This is basically um, the same thing that we had uh, at the beginning with the threads. So instead of doing this for each, we need to collect this. And now, yeah, now the name handles doesn't apply here because these are no longer handles. These are actually results. Collect into a vector. And we can do now very something very similar to before, but Results, actually results of in results uh -huh. by 
And I think that's it. This should work. Well, we have an unused import, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> Look at that, that was pretty easy. Okay, um, it's printing everything. Uh, I think there is slight, yeah. It's now printing everything all at once, uh, basically. Whereas with the threaded solution, or the naive um, uh, standard thread solution, it was printing things uh, as they came. So we could see a little bit of, um, you know, the, the first ones were printed a bit faster. Uh, we, we can maybe stash this to see it. Oh no, I just added everything. I don't, ah, oh, can I undo that? No, I can't, shit. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I actually wanted to compare this um, rayon solution with uh, one, with what we have already added uh, with the threads, but I think there is no going back when doing something like this, unless I copy everything. Let's um, maybe do that. If I copy everything and undo, 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 until we get back to the threads. This is stupid. Now we are here. Yes, here. Save. Let's add this and now grab everything and so paste. <laughs> and yes, now now I am where I wanted to be. Um, so if we compare the changes from using Rayon, uh, what about the code? Well, it's a bit less indented because we are not running everything in uh, inside of thread scope so that's that's nice other other than that is basically the same thing we are collecting things into into a vector and then uh, iterating that so yeah the the complexity of the code is basically the same I, I would say oh and now we can actually early return here we don't need this um, intermediate uh, variable we can just say, we actually get rid of this, get rid of this, and here we can early return because we are in the scope. Um, we are not inside a, a closure. So that's also nice. And we can see it now the code is a bit shorter. That's nice. Um, but other than that, we can see that if we run uh, the code now, well, once it is compiled, it just prints everything back all at once after it has um, after it has collected all the results. Whereas before, what I wanted to do was not not add. Uh, I want to stage or changes. Can't I? Can't I like stash this? Yes, stash this. Just. Stash that, but keep the already staged changes. I think there probably is a git command line um, parameter to git stash to do exactly that. I don't know about it. But if we build and run now, yeah, you can see that it basically prints up to here or some, somewhat, and, and we can see that it goes a bit, yeah, it prints in chunks. Which, to be honest, doesn't really make all that difference. So I think I will just unstash that. Um, apply latest stash. Yes. OK. Oh, it tried to. Do I have off? Oh, this is pretty stupid. What is the stashed changes? Yeah, I want everything from the stash. So accept all incoming, I guess. And is it done? Okay. I don't know if I did what I wanted to do. No, actually, did I lose the things? <laughs> uh, let's go back to the, to the conflicts and let's try to uh, fix the conflicts. Shit. 
Man, I, I, I suck at this um, Git. Um, I don't know, the handling of Git in, in Visual Studio Code. So let's do a very manual um, merge here. I hate doing this. But okay, rayon, blah, blah. And here, basically, we don't want this version by. And we do want this version. Okay, yes. Uh, actually, I lost something there. So um, again, let's try again. Um, what I want is this, the incoming, right? So let's do that. Yes. Okay. Forgive my um, <laughs> clumsy git um, handling there. Remove the end use thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I think I, I do prefer the Rayon version, although it's, it's printing everything at once instead of like going one by one, but eh, I don't care. It's just um, like 300 milliseconds or something like that. So, and I, and I do prefer the um, simpler code for this. So, yeah, let's actually add these changes. And well, now we are really uh, having fast execution time, less than one second for sure, but we are no longer um, complying with this um, optional goal that I had of using vanilla Rust and no external dependencies. So let's add a caveat here, except for Rayon, which is awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I won't be so much of a vanilla Rust um, sellout for this. I think I accept the use of an, an external library if it's something so useful as Rayon. Although like my, my main um, goal with this was learning stuff and having fun. And I've learned a lot of, of stuff, <laughs> uh, exploring, um, learning about Rust, uh, multi-threading, and the standard library and then realizing what Rayon provides. So yeah, the learning has been done. And I'm glad for that. So let's commit these things. And let's say um, parallelize uh, daily, daily um, solutions or daily Puzzle functions. Yeah. Yeah. Daily puzzle uh, solutions. Actually, solutions. Um, Parallelize execution. Execution of each uh, daily solution. Yeah, something like that. Uh, use rayon. This uh, reduces the total runtime from about one second to around 350 milliseconds. Yeah, I think that's fine. And I think that will be it for this video. Although before um, hanging up, I think I want to do something. Um, I want to make a, oops, make a thumbnail. Uh, let's use toilet for this. So what was today's video about? Uh, it was about, um, we can say maybe advent of code, <laughs> plus rayon <laughs> uh, equals what was it like 3x speed up uh, yeah and let's use the font um, mono 12 that is too big that's what she said and uh, that's still too big uh, although maybe if we clear the screen and we use a minimal prompt is this too big? Eh, kind of, but we can 
How do I make full screen out of this? Oh, look at that. This is not looking really nice. So let's go out of... Um, do we have other fonts for this? Or maybe the, the text is pretty stupid. Um, how do we call this video? Maybe advent of code. Um, parallelization. Realization. That's a boring title, but I'll take it. Yeah, side by side with the code. So yeah, that will be the video thumbnail and that will be it for today or tonight. And if you have been, thanks for watching. Thank you very, very much. And I will see you later. Bye bye.